William Hunt's several roles sponsors the Trilby Tour. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. This week it's the Trilby Twos, where a yacht rigger and a window fitter, a sparky and a butcher, and a brace of train drivers team up to compete against another hundred or so pairs of amateur golfers to try and become the 2018 Trilby Twos champions. Trilby Twos comes for the first time to North Yorkshire and Harrogate Golf Club. Friends old and new compete in pairs across 18 holes, which means twice the shots, twice the arguments, twice the lost balls, and of course, twice the chances of glory. Coming up on the show, we have all the best of the play from a lovely day out in Harrogate. The best four pairs play off over three holes until we find our 2018 Trilby Twos champion. And we have someone hitting themselves in the face with a ball in a double your fun rogues gallery. Hannah Wilkes will be seeing double as she talks to the players in the first tee, but now here's our commentator, Lone Wolf, Rob Lee. Thank you, Mac. Yeah, it's a very relaxed atmosphere at the Trilby too. A lot of fun and everyone looks forward to playing this every year. We're at Harrogate Golf Club, designed before the turn of the 1900s by Alistair McKenzie. Beautiful little short course and a lot of fun in this format. Let's get to Hannah on the first tee. Well, welcome to the Trilby, Rob and Dean, who I have to say, you're standing in exactly the same position, so you're clearly in sync with one another, which is a good <laughs> start. Uh, now, who does what? Because, Rob, you look like a calm kind of person. Yeah, I tend to... Uh, steady, you're going to steady yeah. the ship? He's, a, he's yeah. a steady guy, definitely. That's right. Dean, that's right. you're just going to whack it. I'm a thrasher. Right? Yeah, that's me. Can't go anywhere. Full proof. <laughs> sometimes it goes straight down middle. Sometimes, <laughs> not all the time. That's so right. are you going to... I'm guessing you're the better player. No, no, we kind of... Yes, we play each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you played a lot of pairs before? Yeah, quite a few, actually. We've done quite well, haven't we? We've done all right. Yeah, we've won a few right. comps. And yeah. yeah, but and you've never trill beat. No, this would be a good experience, I think. Yeah, it's a true. whole new kettle of fish. Absolutely. You're yeah. feeling the pressure. I like the kind of quiet, peaceful tea area. It's not that it's peaceful. So, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, You're really yeah, trying yeah. to get yourself in, into the right place. And no. you just keep getting shouted at. That would make it too easy, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah. Well, go back over there, get shouted at some more and tee off. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Cheers. much. Well, it's better ball, so here's Rob at the first. Just a little line off the tee. Oh, yes. Firm. Decisive. Par 69. Two par fives, five par threes. And that is ideal. Now, a home advantage can make a huge difference on any Trilby event, especially the Trilby Twos. Uh, Robert, Francis, you are members here at Harrogate, so you have no excuses. You should know this course like the back of your hand. Yeah, we should do, but it's still a hard course to play. <laughs> it is. What, what makes it a challenging course? What's, what's hazardous about it? Where have you got to be careful? Everywhere. It's, t it's a tight course, so uh, it's risk and reward. So if you go for it and you miss it, well, you can lose the ball very easily. And do you two know where to take the risks? We've Calculated risks? No, we've lost the ball everywhere. <laughs> you can lose the ball here in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> what will be an acceptable score for you two today? What will you leave here with your head held high? 26. That seems fairly low. <laughs> yeah, it's 26. Anything above that, we'll be doing all right. Well, if you set the bar low, you can only be impressed, right? <laughs> That's it. We'll try and beat our 43, what we qualified with. Uh, we'll have a go for 44. <laughs> that sounds more like it. Go on then. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Well, that's why people like this format, because if you don't come in, your partner can, you ham and egg it, 
All right, he's got a bit of swing drill going on. He's got the shades on. Future's so bright, he's got to wear them. What about this? Yeah, the sun's coming out. Day's getting better, and that's a perfect start for France's Harrogate members cheering them on. Well, these are two very familiar faces on the Trilby Tour. Tony Mather, Gary Stutton. We have been picking our brains for the last hour or so, and we can't figure out who is carrying who today. Well, neither of us carry, and we're going to win this. I did not expect that answer. Really? Yeah, really? Of course, why not? Yeah, it's completely yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Today, yeah, completely right. I think we've got this in the bag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I like in this kind of level of confidence. Um, are you both playing particularly well today? Fantastic, yeah. I've been playing great lately, to be honest, yeah, so we're ready to go today. Weather's just turned nice for us as well, so... Mm. Might make you a bit sweaty. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm feeling it a bit at the minute, <laughs> if I'm honest. That'll be the only thing that kills it today. Yeah. yeah. I like this determination, guys. Uh, have you had a practice round? No. <laughs> no? No, no. Don't playing it blind? Me. Yeah, playing it blind, yeah. Okay. Who we're very have... good at blind. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Who's in charge? Gary today. Tony today. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe if you at least agree on who's calling the shots, you'll no, we, be off to a all winner. We, all we know is we're going to win. OK, I'm going to hold you to that and see you in about four hours' time and hope that's the okay. case. Yeah, fine. Well, they're talking the talk and walking the walk. I have never been less convinced from any pair. Shut up. Yes. Yeah. And they're applauding that because... Not sure... Well, this dynamic duo have two Trilby Tour championships between them. Paul, former champion of Cumbria, and Mark, former champion of Leicestershire. So between you, surely, you've got the Trilby Twos all tied up. Well, you would have thought so, but you know what? It's, we'll take each, we, each all as it comes. We're going to live on the memories, and we're going to build on it, and we're going to take the title, and it will be... Unbelievable. <laughs> we challenge him not to say unbelievable during this interview. So first answer, and that's already gone out the window. Yeah. Uh, Mark, it sounds like Paul's got a game plan, and is he is he the boss today? Yes, certainly. Yeah, we just you know we do gel quite well, and uh, we have a, a lot of fun. So um, we're really looking forward to it today. Good, as you should be. Uh, how do you know each other? Is it just through trilbies, or have you got yeah, a bit of golfing history? We, we met in the final last year. We yeah, played we together did. in the final last year. Yeah, so it's uh, and we we did hit it off straight yeah. away. It's been good. Yeah. Story, yeah. Trilby Tour, bringing people together. Exactly. That's what we're all about. Yeah, very um, good. If it goes horribly today, is this one of the most short lived friendships in history? No, no, no definitely no. not. No, uh, definitely not. You friendship can... for life. Yeah. yeah. It's been, a... it's been good. Yeah. yeah. We, we visit off. It's been brilliant. Good well, friends. In that case, guys, just go play well. Enjoy we yourselves. Thank, Thank you very kind much. Of feel like you should... Let's have a hug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> friends. <Group> friends. <laughs> Thank you. Let the bromance flourish. Iron for Naylor. Oh, nice turn through the ball as well with the top half. Normally you do that, you do not hit it left, that's fine. David Big Dog Hughes. Yes. Rory, no hope. <laughs> um, individually, you are capable of some really quite bad golf. Together, is it you lift each other up or is it just car crash? Well, I've been doing a couple of bench presses this morning now because obviously he's a big lad. I don't want to hit my back anymore. So let's see how it goes. Getting excuses in there early. Yeah. Oh, I've done my back. Me. I did my back. He is going to carry you. He'll carry me, yeah. He'll carry me, yeah. yeah. No, I think we're, we're going to have a good time today. Good mates. And twos is about being good mates. And every dog has his day. And today <laughs> could be the big boom, boom. dog's day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I literally, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> have you played here before? No, no. playing the blind. Playing it blind, yeah. ball two move. Two fantastic caddies up. Yeah. We've got a club champion on the back, so he's going to have a shock today. Yeah. <laughs> so the caddy is really, he's really in charge. Yeah. So let me say that again. The caddy is in charge. Neither are you two. No, definitely, definitely caddy. Look at this. This is real friendship. No, no, you should just hug me. the whole way round. We, 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 we will. We will do. Yeah, don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah. There'll be some kissing in the kitchen in yeah, the, in the yeah, street. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> you do, what, do whatever feels right. Have yeah. fun. No Thank worries. you so much. <laughs> okay, Looking forward to it. Here's the big dog. He's just checking that club face position. Quarter way back. And... Now, if that goes down the fairway, it's remarkable. He has. Ten handicapper. Rory plays off eight. Pretty good pairing. Out into the golf course. And this is young Chippendale. Robert Chippendale. He's second at the 16th, so they're nearly done. And that one trundling up towards the front apron. Missing the target, though. All the way back to the front nine and the sixth. 
Rob Cooper playing alongside Dean Stewart. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Three par threes in the front nine, two on the back. Mother, 32 points so far. And in this format, better ball, that is not going to be good enough for Tony. Playing with Gary Studdard. So a bit of a lackluster day, but they're enjoying it. And that's the whole theme with the twos. Chippendale at 16. Trying to fin finish off some tardy work in tardy fashion. And he succeeded. That's especially poor. Cooper for the par. Come on. Yes. No, he laid it up. 40 points. Uh, that's a bit of a marker. See if people can get past that. They lead in the clubhouse. Back to 16. Chippendale. This would be a remarkable par. Very unlucky. 35 points. In the end for Robert and Francis. Did not qualify. However, had a ball. Three to go. The Turner combination playing alongside Paul Naylor. He's from Forest Hill, Leicestershire. Mark, that is. Trying to bounce it on. Unbelievably green, this golf course, considering the summer in Harrogate. Rory Easthope. He's alongside the big dog. Now, we know they're a wild pairing. That's actually not too bad. Clattering around the fir trees. Mather for the par at 17. Oh, how has that stayed out? It doesn't really matter. Tony and Gary, 34. That will not qualify. D and Q. What a pair. Turner from the front, 15. He's in the red. That's good. Come on. Yeah. Work to be done. East Hope's chip and putt attempt at 16. This whole catching a lot of pairs out. Oh, no. I need a groove check on that. Excess check. Turner for the part, 15. Come on, 30 points. This would improve and tidy up everything significantly. That hasn't happened. 35 points. Mark and Paul. Confidence exuding before the tee off. Crestfallen. East Hope for the par at 16. We're waiting to see our first part hold. 37 points for Big Dog and Rory. Yeah, playoff position, but doesn't look promising. The Rogers brothers. Now, Paul, you've got a history of winning things on the Tour. Mark, you haven't. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Um, I've been pretty poor over the years, but today's going to change. I like that, feeling confident. Paul, you got a game plan? Yeah, I think um, just to say keep it in play today. Um, it looks pretty tight out there. We haven't really played a practice round, so uh, just a quick walk round. Looks quite tree lined up there. So, yeah, just keep it in play and uh, play this off and see what we can do. Who's the boss today? Who's going to be uh, calling the shots? He's the boss, man. He's the best golfer. Very wise. It's all on him. All on you, Paul, if it goes terribly <laughs> wrong. I know, more pressure on there, in there, really. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it on board and see how we go and uh, just bring us along and uh, hopefully we can do it, you know. Do you play well as a team or do you sometimes get, you know, in that way that siblings can, do you start to irritate each other if it's not going well? We're, we're normally good together, aren't we? Yeah. We normally play yeah. pretty well together, yeah. 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 And that could all change today. Yeah, it could, yeah. <laughs> Just hopefully that we all come in at the right time, do you know what I mean? Um, not the same holes, but uh, we've got a few shots between us, so we'll see what we can do. Well, yeah. good luck. Thank you. Have fun. Cheers. I used to drive up to Gainsborough when I was a young whippersnapper to get my club sorted out. One of the major golf manufacturers are based there. Paul Rogers, five handicap. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good day. And that one is OK. We'll see his progress with his partner when we come back. Perfect Gentleman's Playground. Welcome back to a beautiful day at Harrogate Golf Club for the Trilby Twos. Everybody is now teed off. The best score in the clubhouse has come from Rob Cooper and Dean Stewart. That's 40 points. But in this format, that surely must be better. So, Chris Atkinson at the eighth hole. It's a par four. It's not especially long, 371 yards. So position off the tee was excellent, and as he turns for home, and that's just on the fringe, not too bad. Partner quite satisfied with that. 28 points for Chris Howard playing with Daniel Whitehurst. 
both from Boringdon Golf Club in Devon. You wouldn't want to be associated with anything that the first half of the word is boring, would you really? Sellers. Now this better be cutting a long way left to right. It isn't. And it's finished over there. He might get a little raspy pitch through the spindly silver birches. Atkinson, we saw his second shot finish on the fringe. This is right across the putting surface and no, I had a little think about it, but it's trundled on by. Now let's see if Sellers can chip this close. Julian, short game skills. Look at this. Look at this. He might want to escape. Sean Johnson, his partner, looking on. Atkinson's par attempt at the eighth. Come on, Chris. Still to see a putt go in in Harrogate. 39 points for Chris Atkinson and Richard Ingham. 28 points through 13 holes for Chris Howard playing with Daniel Whitehurst. Boringdon boys. 40 points. That's joint top. Good effort. So 32 points through 15 holes. Sellers for the par. Come on. Still putless on the Trilby Tour. The twos. Nobody making anything but 39 points for Sean Johnson and Julian Sellers. Also currently in a playoff position. Let's get to Hannah talking to a slimline William. Well, look who I found. William Hunt. The Trilby Twos. Always a great day, isn't it? It's always a great atmosphere at the twos. I mean, everyone comes here with a smile on the face. Uh, doesn't always leave with a smile on the face. You know, there's <laughs> quite a few arguments among best friends. Um, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun day. It's a fun day. It gets very serious at the end, as always. And it's a beautiful course here at Harrogate. So many trees. It is a beautiful, beautiful golf course. Um, but I've been saying it all, all season. It's not about the course. First, it's the people. Uh, it's the welcome they give you. The venue. And when you throw in a, a, you know, into the mix like a course like this, you never know what the, what the two's going to throw up because you know somebody comes out, out of nowhere. Sometimes people that are regular players on it in the singles bring someone else along to play with it, and then who knows? Who knows? Anything could happen. That's why we love it. It's all good fun. <laughs> Everyone enjoying the vibe, but they always do every year at the twos. Now, Master Rogers, high into the sky and trying to find its target with unerring accuracy. Well, he got a nice little knuckle bounce left front edge. Can you make that? Back to that eighth hole. You know, it's a gentle dog leg from right to left. And this is a gentle approach. Right at it. We could be about to see our first birdie. Rogers. Partner watching. Synchronized in black and white stripes. Mm, had a lot of swing in it from right to left. Now, this is the big time. This is huge for Vernon Charles. Slips by Michael Taylor, his partner. Both posting 39 points. That's in the dodgy playoff position. Now, what about the Rogers brothers? This is Mark. Approach putt finish here, and he's knocked that in. Crucial one because 41 points has them the top in the clubhouse. First time we've been to this beautiful old golf club in Harrogate. Let's find out what the playoff holes are going to be with Hannah. Thanks very much, Rob. Our playoff holes here at Harrogate are first, 17th and 18th. They're all par fours and they're all quite close together. We're on the first now. You see the 18th just behind me and then the 17th to the side of it. And to talk us through these playoff holes, it's Frank Beckett, who's a former president here at Harrogate. Frank, first hole, number one in our playoff. It looks like a relatively straightforward par four, but I'm guessing you can tell me that's not the case. Luke, Luke's going to be deceptive. Uh, it's a very narrow entrance to the hole. Uh, it's protected by bunkers, but what you've got to watch is that the, if you hit the ball too far up to the left, you are shut out for your approach shot. And the green slopes from the front to the back, so it's a difficult second shot. And the better golfers will tend to play an iron for safety up the right-hand side of the field. And where is the pin positioned today? The pin positioned today, it looks at its front and it's in the middle of the green. And how do you approach that? How does that change how you play the green? Well, you want to make sure you have a line into the green and you want to probably land the ball short and not hit a full shot into the green. So, Frank, the 17th is our second playoff hole and it's a bit longer than hole one. The, the playoff holes get incrementally longer on this. How do you play the 17th? Well, you've got to watch there's a bunker on the left, which uh, a, a ball will catch that bunker coming down the left and all the balls will run to the right. So you need a very accurate straight drive. 
And then once you get down to the green, we've got a Mackenzie green, which looks really tricky. How do you play this and where's the pin placed today? Well, today the, the pin is placed right behind a big bunker on the left-hand side. So you really want your drive to be on the right-hand side of the fairway so you can have a go at that pin position. But it's got to get up to the top level of the green. And just how many problems is that likely to cause? Because remember, these are amateur golfers. <laughs> Well, as an amateur golfer myself, this can cause problems. You've got to get the ball up on the top level of the green. If you don't, it's going to run back down the green towards you. So you have to be super precise. You need to be very accurate and choose the right club from the middle of the fairway. The 18th, Frank. It's a very long par four. You've got trees all the way up to the left. And am I right in thinking it's out of bounds to the right? So you've got to keep it very straight. It's out of bounds all the way up on the right, right to the green side. And talk to me a little bit about the green and where the pin position is today and how you approach this green and best set yourself up. The green here, you've got to watch there's two bunkers alongside, either side of the green. So any, light, any shot slightly offline is going to catch those bunkers. And there are some big trees surrounding the green as well. So you've got to be, make your drive, and obviously in the middle of the fairway, but it's a fairly long shot in from there to get the green, which is a big green. And the pin is fairly well, fairly, approachable today. Like we've said, it's very long. Just how difficult a hole is this to play on tired legs and when you're a bit, little bit golf weary? It's a tough hole, uh, although today, as you say, it's easy condition. But if you're playing here into the wind after 21 holes, it's going to be hard going. Well, if the wind picks, that will be a very interesting yeah. playoff. Who will be our Trilby 2's champions, Rob? I don't know yet, Hannah. We'll find out a little bit later what William thinks. Now, hidden behind that tree is Stuart Carroll. Mark Samuel watching on his partner, both from Ferndown Forest Golf Club in Dorset, bunkered till tail rake. 31 points, big finish required. Slater, Jonathan that is, playing with Ben Thornham, Hull Golf Club's finest. This is trying to nerdle its way under the front of the green, almost. Carroll's bunker play will be examined right now. Pretty good shot, pretty aggressive, played it well. Should come from right to left this one at 15. Now starts to turn. He's got a chance if he hit it. Oh, he just had to hit it. However, 42 points. That is now the best score in the clubhouse. Thornham and Slater flying the flag for Hull. Carroll's par putt at 13. Come on. Oh, look at his partner. Look at Mark Samuel. 42 points, though, the pair of them. They book their ticket to the playoff. Who will join them? One on 42, two pairs on 41, and the 40s played off. Cooper and Stewart versus Howard and Whitehurst. Only one pair going through. And these were two extraordinary shots. Job done. So it's commiserations to Rob Cooper and Dean Stewart. Nothing for finishing fifth in this game. Thanks for coming. So it's Samuel and Carroll. Thornham and Slater, the Rogers brothers and Howard and Whitehurst that make it through to the playoff. Hunts Hunch is next. It's the pairs, isn't it? And who can pick anything from these? Um, form would go off the Rogers boys uh, because I think Paul has got the bit between his teeth. Ben Thornham and John Slater. I don't know much about these boys, but they look determined. They've played the Trilby Tour a couple of times now and look very determined. Mark Samuel and Stuart Carroll could be the dark horses. They get they, they, they get a combined 12 handicap allowance. They get a couple of shots. But as we know, every time that somebody has, the, you know, the, the high handicapper, weaker technique, pressure doesn't really work. History tells us that. Chris Howard and Dan Whitehurst, no shots again. Don't know anything about these two lads. Look very confident. To sum all that up, who's my pick? The brothers Rogers. <laughs> Well, old Mother Shipton, her cave is on the edge of the golf course. Now, she was a seer, and we now know through the entire Trilby Tour that William Hunt is not a seer. He has no skills of foretelling the future. Can he get it right for one week at least? Join us after the break. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. Welcome back to Harrogate. It's the playoff, the 2018 Trilby Twos. To qualify, you played better ball, but in the playoff, it's going to be foursomes. First to tee off will be Ben Thornham and Jonathan Slater. We didn't have a hole where neither, well, both of us played badly, so we chipped in now and again. Uh, 
Ben carried me on the par threes. To yeah. be fair, I was a bit shocky on them, but uh, yeah, overall just sort of chipped in when we needed to, and uh, it was pretty solid all the way around. Back nine was uh, a little bit better than the front nine, yeah. but um, yeah, pretty good. So it's foursomes, only one tee shot per hole. Thornham with the honour. Oh, and that's low, short, and wild. Over to you, partner. Next up, Mark Samuel and Stuart Carroll. I think we've both, we both sort of played reasonably well. Stewie had a great front nine. Back nine, I came in with a few holes, and I think just dovetailing made the difference to get us our 42 points today. Yeah. Carroll, now just get in the fairway. Not much to beat. He struck it well, but it's wild. It's way left. Where is that going to finish? Well done, partner. Never say sorry in foursomes. It's impossible. The Rogers brothers. Paul set off really well. First five holes, you know, he was a couple under on his own. And um, then I, I came in towards the end of the back, first front nine, um, start of the back nine, then he came back in, and then me again to finish. So, you know, pretty much Ian Stevens, really. Paul with the duty of hitting the tee shot, the first. And he's just cut across that slightly. It's a lot better than the previous two. What's Bruv going to say about that one? He's going to say, that's all right, don't worry. And the final pair, Christopher Howard and Daniel Whitehurst. Fantastic, enjoyed every minute. We had a great day. It was a difficult kind of round, but uh, my man here was absolutely fantastic. And fortunately, I dovetailed at exactly the right moment. Mm. So we put together about as good a score as we could do on day. I think we, we really? hung in there last few holes, didn't we? It felt we like did. it was hanging off a cliff we edge. Yeah. We held a few sort of 20-foot putts to stay in it and uh, some good sort of up around greens. They were banging it miles kind of thing and it was, it kind of went good. If we just had 40 points before we started, we'd have oh, yeah. 40 points. Absolutely. Now he's got a driver. This is bold. Whoa. He's given that a filthy hit down there. It certainly foxed our cameraman. Oh, it's finished in the rough and not as straight as he would have liked. Now, the only stroke between all four pairs go to Mark Samuel and Stuart Carroll. That will be when they go down 18. Speaking of which, this is Mark Samuel. His partner put him there off the tee. And he's back in play. Foursomes. The pressure's always on in foursomes. Slater with a second. He's giving that a good hit. Shouting bite. Bit of a flyer. Sit down. Brilliant. That's a wonderful shot from there. So they're back in it. Nerves are jangling. Third shot for Carroll. Basically because of his tee shot. And that has missed the target. So they're struggling for five without a stroke. It's only three holes long, the playoff. Big mistake at the first. You can wave goodbye. Rogers with the second after Paul's tee shot finished here. That murmur from the crowd, that assuring murmur, means it's found the target. So they're putting for a birdie from distance, mind. Now, Christopher Howard's drive was a long one, but slightly left. Has he got a shot? Oh, he's got some sort of a shot. Poked it through and, oh, line-wise, it was excellent. Oh, almost took out the cameraman. Danger money. Chipping and putting required. And here is that shot. Howard with the driver. Power. Now he needs the touch. The sand wedge. A low scuttler. Not especially close to the hole. Well, he plays off scratch. Now Thornham from the edge. Oh, and this is all very nervous stuff. Nobody wants to win. What an opportunity to take an advantage at the first. What about a ridiculous par? For Mark Samuel. Stuart Carroll will have that for his bogey five. Paul Rogers. Long, long birdie putt. Par is now looking excellent here downhill from this point come on that's nah, well judged so the brothers rogers par the first laying down the gauntlet in foursomes as well whitehurst for the four no strokes level and that's going to be whitehurst and howard one over two holes to go so they're playing catch up 
This would be a, an escape. Chip wasn't good. A good putt can always make up for it, though. No, under reading the bar from right to left on that one. Plus one. So one at level, two at plus one. And still work to be done for the final foursome to post a bogey five. Carroll, can he hold it? No, he cannot. No, 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 no. Double bogey six. Samuel and Carroll. But they do have that shot on 18. It might be very important. Nothing more to say then. My pick looks like it's going to win. Oh, one more thing. I want them to win because they're great guys. You see, we like a downtrodden hunt. We don't like it when he gets confident. He's very keen now on his picks. Here's Mark Rogers. Oh, yes. And that's Next perfect. The team, They're leading. Level after one. Two holes to go. Finishing line in sight. Got to make something happen now. Johnny Slater. So he's going with the driver. 389 yards. Trying to cover most of it. With that. Little Gary player walk, but it's left. Needs a break. Needs a big break. Not sure. Maybe it's there in the open. Daniel Whitehurst. Oh, yes. Gave that a smack. Oh, a little bounce left. What a pity. Cart might have done him a favor. Might have helped him out. Double bogey at the first for Samuel and Carroll. They're getting the hang of it now. They're loosening up these pairs. Full tilt down the second playoff hole, which is 17. And look at the crowd. Good crowds here at Harrogate. They've turned out in the sunshine to see the finish to an exciting Trilby 2. Rogers. Mark hit the tee shot. Paul hits the second. Roger that. A little early with the call, perhaps. Through the back edge. No danger, though. Oh, look of a confident pair. Carol. Now, if it stays straight and bounces on and releases, it's a pretty decent attempt. Go on. That's well done. They're in two. Chris Howard playing with Daniel Whitehurst. This is the tee shot that clipped the buggy. And that's not managed to clip the green. Running down that bank at the back, very close to Mac. Difficult cameras and crowds and expectation and pressure. You put all that in the melting pot. And you need to find your A game. It's not easy. Brilliant. What a reply. And that's changed the entire look of the whole thing. Samuel, little chip, little flat one. Get it to run. Oh, it scuttled its way through the green. Little clean bottom groove. Didn't quite catch it correctly. Now it's the chipping and putting. Whitehurst with his partner, Christopher Howard. Must get this up and down. It was a nearly shot, that. Still makeable. Rogers chipping from the back. Oh, and he sculled that. That's barely going to stay on the green. Dear, dear, dear. That's a shocker. Carroll for the par. Plus two. Shot up the last. This would change their fortunes immediately. And he's left it short online. So that's the best they can do. Three over par going down the last. It cannot be them. Samuel and Carroll gone. Christopher Howard. Plus one if he knocks us in. Go on, get there. Unlucky. Unlucky. He had a pop, did the right thing, got it past the hole. But it's another shot gone. The Rogers brothers to save going one over. And there's going to be big changes here. So they go to plus one. They're in the blue. Mark and Paul. Their dominance receding. Things could change. What about Thornham and Slater? Oh, they don't take advantage of a brilliant second. So they are plus one going down the last. You would think it's between two teams. 
Whitehurst and his partner Howard can only post two over, which they don't do. So they're gone. And the picture's now very clear. It's the one overs that have a chance to win the Trilby twos. So Samuel and Carroll, they're out. They're just, you know, they're not going to get back. They're two shots off it. They're the higher handicaps of this. And as we always see, week in and week out, sometimes the higher handicaps get in here, but then can't keep it together. Howard and Whitehurst, they're going to be disappointed with what, with what they've, they've offered so far. Two shots behind with one on left. It's a straight race now between Thornham and Slater and the Rogers is is. Come on, Rogers. Well, at least William's still in it going down the last. This is new ground for him. Thornham. Whoosh. There is out of bounds down the right here. That's not going right. Next for team well, it is going right. Is Hang on, it's only just in bounds. Rogers to reply. Very reliable swing. Two turns and a swish, and that's found the fairway. That puts them now in pole position. Carroll at three over par. He can hit it. Now that's heading right towards the out of bounds. And Kaplouche. OB, Oscar Bravo. Good night. Howard hits it a long way. Oh, giving that a hit. Look at the hang time. Um, we're going to have another ball played by Stuart Carroll, please. Well, at three over par, three off the tee is not really going to get you much, but a bit of practice. Bouncing down the left-hand side in amongst the oh, trees, and that's blocked out. It's all academic. Fourth shot for Stuart Carroll. That's a miracle it didn't hit anything. He's done well to get it to there. So they're now amongst the also rounds. This is right at the top of the pile, though. Mark Rogers off the Paul T shot. William Hunt saddled on their shoulders. Oh, that's tremendous. Well done. Jonathan Slater, Ben Thornham at the tee shot. It was a long one. Sit. Stayed in bounds though. Sit. And that's terrific. So game on. Two teams still in it. Two teams plus one and it's foursomes. Very nervous moments for those in contention. Not in contention. Daniel Whitehurst and Christopher Howard. Go Dan. Go. 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 Yeah, yeah, you can do your damage early in a playoff and then it really is goodbye. That's happened to Samuel and Carroll, even though they got a shot here at 18. They're too far back. Nicely done. Finishing style. And if you think about it, how often will these chaps get a chance to play in front of a crowd like this? Thornham for the birdie to get back to level. Oh my goodness me. Sorry, partner. Don't worry. Don't say sorry. You always say sorry in foursome. It's impossible not to. Carol. Oh, that's a nice putt to finish with. Hard lines. Made it through to the playoff. It's a fine effort, but it will not be you. Three over par for the combine of Howard and Whitehurst. Their race is run. No real point in letting that one come up three feet short. Down to the nitty gritty, Paul Rogers for the win in the Trilby Twos. Oh, and it's one of those. It's not stone dead. It's a swallow and a dry throat for Paul Rogers. Mark's got to tap that one in. Whitehurst just cleaning things up. Yeah, uh, they were gone some time ago. So, it's about short putting. It's about the nerve of Jonathan Slater to stay plus one with his partner, Ben Thornham. Oh, and he holds it. He holds it. Pressure putt. And even if it's a little tiddly one, you'll take a look at it. No Mickelson and Woods gimmies here. For the playoff to continue. 
Oh, gutsy. He'll go back down to the 18th tee. Foursome's format, no shots. Playing off level. So back to Slater, going with the driver again. Likes it, loves it. Second up, we have Mark. That's Rogers. fabulous with the driver. Pressure on, applied. Mark hitting the tee shot. Oh no, oh no. What a time to hit one like that. Well, it's still going forwards. But it's a long way from the fairway and the target. He's got a raised up path in there and trees. This is what's left for his brother. Can he manufacture some sort of Bubba Watson shot from here? No, he cannot. And really put under pressure by the brilliance of the opposition. And now going with a wood for his third shot. Gadzooks. Where's this gone? There's out of bounds all the way down the right. And that's mm, behind that tree. And this is becoming untidy for the, the Rogers brothers and Hunt's Hunch. Thornham. No, oh, he's loving it. His partner's loving it. That's why middle of the green in two. And that looks like the death now for the Rogers brothers and William Hunt. Back behind the oak tree is Paul. Now, can he sort of fashion one through the gap here and get it to stop somehow? Pretty much as good as he could have done. It's a well-played shot. But they've already played too many. They could shake hands here, but they won't. Two putts will do. This is technically a putt to win. Just roll it up, stone dead partner. And I think, thank you. Shake hands. No, no one's stirring from the family Rogers for a five and a bogey. Now we can shake hands, now surely. No, tapping in for the six. So it's two putts from two feet for the champions elect of this year's Trilby Twos. Thornham for the putt and the win. And with his partner, Jonathan Slater, they do the business in extra time. They are the 2018 Trilby Twos champions at Harrogate Golf Club. Fantastic day. And yet another piece of silverware makes its way across the country and it will reside on the mantelpiece at Hull Golf Club alongside Ben Rosenbrook's World Championship trophy. Just one event left in the Trilby Tour year and it's next week when all the champions and qualifiers reconvene at Hull Golf Club to see who is the 2018 Trilby Champion of Champions. Shot of the day this week is awarded to Darren Knight, and we chose to believe that his chip to the green on the 12th wasn't a complete fluke, but a perfectly executed tactical masterstroke. Now, we just have time for a quick trip to Rogue's Gallery. And we start by wondering what is of interest here until a ball dribbles over yonder hillock and cresting said feature, the golfer having a bad day, is seen to be Ian Rogers. Easier to spot is Clive Powell on the sixth, having his own troubles, this time with trees. On the 17th, Rogue's Gallery mainstay Gary Stuttard with a predictable piece of hopeless, hapless nonsense. Ian Pratt on the 13th decides to abandon his round in favour of dive-bombing the players waiting to tee off on the 14th. It's their little faces we like best. Look, totally shell-shocked. Different approaches to messing up the 12th now, starting with Derek Clark, who favours going hard, right and into the trees. Then, to shake things up, Clive Powell goes, no, we're only kidding. He does exactly the same thing. Gary Sharp, however, does vary his attempt, favouring the very, very long steward scaring shot. Here's Julian Sellers on the 16th with a truly terrible sideways fairway scraper, followed by a carbon copy shot on the same hole by Stephen Horrocks, who does, at least, 
almost reach the buggy path. And adjacent to that same path is newly crowned twos champion Jonathan Slater, showing exactly the sort of form that convinces us his playing partner scored most of the points. We're not sure if it's fair to call this a rogue shot, as it's more of a trick shot. Paul Burns exiting the bunker, pinging the flag and then degreening. I mean, it took him years of practice to perfect that. Who'd be a cameraman now and a limp attempt to hit Juby by Stephen Lloyd on 13 ends with his ball running out of steam and dribbling sadly into some cables. A zippier effort from Alan Gandhi on the 6th, but one which finishes by hiding itself in shame somewhere under Matt's buggy. Finally, the ultimate act of self-sabotage from Nick Vanstone as he turns a bunker escape on the 14th into an attempt to straighten his previously broken nose. Now, let's see what William made of Harrogate Golf Club. Uh, new venue, Harrogate, beautiful part of the country, beautiful golf course. If you looked in the dictionary and looked up traditional golf club, this would be it. People of Harrogate, don't change a thing about this place. It's beautiful. Next week, it's the big one. The international grand final returns to Hull Golf Club and we'll find out who's the best Trilby Tourian of 2018. In the meantime, if you'd like to be a future host of the Trilby Tour, please contact us via the website at www.trilbytour.com. We'll see you next week. William Hunt's several roles sponsors the Trilby Tour. The perfect gentleman's playground.